Sue Moroni. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I rise today in this Parliament for the first time this year completely and utterly underwhelmed. Completely and utterly underwhelmed at the Prime Minister's opening gambit yesterday. Because it came back, well, Happy New Year to the government too, but um, what a shame for New Zealanders. Because what New Zealanders were looking for was a plan. A plan to take us forward in 2010. Because we know that in 2009, yes, it was a difficult year right around the world. Internationally, that was a difficult year, and New Zealanders felt that they had to tighten their belts. And that meant for far too many New Zealanders that they lost their incomes, that they lost their livelihoods. Because we know that what happened last year was that very sharp rise in unemployment. And so New Zealanders were looking for some solutions this year, because what New Zealanders know is that in 2010, the economy is recovering. As it is all around the world, all of the G20 countries are now out of recession, as is New Zealand, as is New Zealand and New Zealanders are thinking, great, 2010, we can look forward to some of the damage being undone. And what did they get from the Prime Minister? Not one word about unemployment in his statement, not one word about job creation. And that's the response that this government has coming into this year to those thousands of New Zealanders who suddenly, through no fault of their own, found themselves on the scrap heap last year. And now they hear from their Prime Minister that there are no opportunities going forward, no plans for job creation, and they just have to sit and wait until some, some miracle happens, because there certainly is no plan from the government coming forward on that. I was listening very carefully, looking out for the areas that I have some responsibility for in this parliament as the opposition spokesperson on both um, early childhood education and women's affairs, because I thought that those were areas that the government would, would really highlight. And certainly last year, I know that the Prime Minister, John Key, in many of his official speeches, had right up front about early childhood education and improving participation being a top priority for the government. Well, it seems that it slipped right down the list this year, because while it was in the written statement made by the Prime Minister, it didn't even rate a mention in the speech that was made here in the debating chamber yesterday. So it certainly slipped right down the agenda, and it's no wonder. I did actually get um, momentarily quite excited when the uh, Prime Minister started talking about unlocking resources, because I felt sure when he talked about unlocking resources that he must have been talking about the human resources in this country, that he was going to come forward with a significant plan of how we were going to actually get hold of our young people, particularly in the, the early years of education, and actually give them that, that better boost through early childhood education. I felt sure that he was going to go on and talk about a skills agenda and a programme for how we actually maximise the potential of our most important resource in this country, our human resource, our people. But no, um, sadly, in fact, when the Prime Minister talked about unlocking resources, he was talking about digging up our playgrounds. He was talking about digging up our national parks, talking about digging up our, our backyards, and certainly for the area that I come from, that was a direct threat to the Coromandel Peninsula, where most people from the Waikato actually go and spend their Christmas holidays. So that's what unlocking the resources means when the, when the Prime Minister gets up to speak. It's a great shame that when he thought about the sorts of resources that really do need unlocking in this country, that he wasn't focused on the early childhood education area. Because all he had to say about it, well, not say about it, I should say, because uh, there was no speech referring to early childhood education, but in his written statement for the beginning of the year, what he says is that this year, this year, the government will focus on increasing the number of children in our poor communities and the Māori and Pacific populations who attend early childhood education. Um, he goes on to say that children who don't attend any form of early childhood education start school at a significant disadvantage. And then he goes on to, I think, um, really give the game away by saying that despite funding being poured into early childhood education in recent years, we're still not picking up and supporting enough of these children. Well, if the Prime Minister actually looked at the statistics, what he would know was that the introduction of the 20 hours free, when it was free, now it's not free under this government, but the 20 hours free policy put in place under Labor significantly 
improved and increased the participation of Māori and Pacifica children in early childhood education. Now that's what you call step change. That was an example of step change. Not, not what, the, what the Prime Minister had to say yesterday. He kept talking about step change and I kept waiting for it. Kept waiting for it. Not one announcement that actually met that type of step change that had been achieved under the previous Labor government. Nonetheless, the, go the Prime Minister set himself a target of, of uh, going further than that, and I think that's a very admirable target. But it was also the target that the Prime Minister had at the beginning of last year. And there was absolutely no progress made on it whatsoever. In fact, in fact I would say the opposite happened. Because we all know, well I hope we all know, I hope we all understand in this Parliament that the importance about early childhood education is not just what it costs, but the type, the quality of that early childhood education experience. Because all the research actually tells us that it's about children getting access to it, but not access to any old childhood experience, but quality early childhood education. And what's this government done in this, that regard so far? Well, last year it spent all of its time dumbing down the sector. It spent all of its time dropping standards in the sector. Actually dropping standards. They can talk about national standards all they like over that side, but when it comes to early childhood education, the standards have been dropped by this government because the very first act that they did was to actually scrap the ratios, planned improvements in child staff ratios that were set to come in in May last year. May 2009, children aged between two and three were set to get improved, more teachers per, per student in early childhood education. And we should all know in this House that that, was at, that would actually improve the quality of the experience for them in early childhood education. But what did that government do? They scrapped those planned ratio changes. They pulled them at the last moment. And so early childhood education providers who were gearing up for that, who had employed the qualified staff to enable them to meet it, suddenly um, didn't have the funding to go with that because the rug was pulled underneath them. Then the second act that uh, the government took that dropped standards in the early childhood education sector was to actually stop the regulations going ahead that were going to ensure that, there were cert that the facilities had to meet certain regulations. I don't think that's too much of an ask for our young children, our very young children, that they should go to facilities that are appropriate for, to have appropriate sleep facilities for the very, very, very small children. I don't think that's a big ask at all. But what did this government do? They said, no, 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 we don't need any of that sort of quality in our early childhood education sector. We'll just, anything will go. So they dropped that. And then late last year, they also surreptitiously dumped the target of having 100% qualified staff in early childhood education by the year 2012. They didn't just shuffle it backwards or say, well, we're not quite ready, we'll just do it at a later time. They completely got rid of that target. So they are dumbing it down and dropping standards in early childhood education. There's no doubt about that. With regard to women's affairs, apparently um, Pansy Wong was in the House yesterday saying that the government was going to spend more money on investigating pay equity or some, some such... Um, some such uh, illusion that she's under. Well, the truth is that under Labor, there was two million per annum spent through the Department of Labor on a very, very good pay and employment equity unit that was doing excellent work. That was canned by the government and replaced with $500,000. So I'm not sure um, what school of accounting Pansy Wong comes from, but cutting from spending $2 million on this area to just $500,000 per annum is not an increase in funding. That's a significant cut in funding to that area. But I think the best part of yesterday for me was this, that while the Prime Minister was giving his address, the Waikato Times was being delivered to every household or most households in the Waikato with the front page headline that screamed, Roading Project Promise Broken. And that was the day that the Prime Minister was trying to set out his strategy for the next 12 months for this country, saying what a fantastic government they were, while they were breaking the only election promise they had made for Hamiltonians, and that was that the Waikato Expressway would be completed within 10 years. Well, what the Waikato Times reported yesterday was that the transport uh, agency came to town and said, actually, folks, it's not going to be completed to the year 2024. 
Election promise broken, no plan 